It's Mike here and today a long overdue H5N1 bird flu update because time has flu. That was a very good one. Anyway, there is a recent death, the first one in the US that the news has really missed the main point about as well as RFK Jr. going on the news and making a claim about the transmissibility of it through food, which I don't view to be fully accurate. We'll cover that. It's also been spreading to new mammals, even a new one as of this week. So we're gonna get into a general update because, you know, as Harvard asked two weeks ago, are we on the cusp of a major bird flu outbreak? Others say we've started a forever war with the virus and many claim that it has pandemic potential. Love that for us. That's exactly what we need right now. Let's just go. So I really don't like doing infectious disease videos. I put them off. I don't wanna to spread too much fear, but there comes a point where you just gotta stay informed. And recently seeing all of this egg drama, witnessing some local egg shelves be empty and just seeing more and more news about it. I'm like, I gotta cover this. But really quick recap for those who are unaware, H5 flu strains are not ones that typically historically infected humans, but they have recently been jumping to other mammals and humans as well. And it's a case where it's been deemed highly pathogenic avian influenza and of the known cases, which are at about a thousand, nearly 500 people have died. So yeah, 50% case fatality rate. And then if you're wondering what the H and the N stands for, these are just coding for proteins on the outside of that virus. H1N1, for example, was what the 1918 Spanish flu, which killed about 50 million people, which most people don't know very likely originated from a small Kansas chicken farm. But the point is H5 and N1 are just codes for this particular strain. They're all influenza A technically, but let's get to that first death case, which was a few weeks back in January. And yeah, it was a concern, but people were really not reporting on what it actually was from and how relevant that is, especially with what's happening right now. And yeah, this person actually passed away tragically because they had backyard chickens. As the Louisiana Health Department says, quote, the patient contracted H5N1 after exposure to a combination of a non-commercial backyard flock and wild birds. So what likely happened was wild birds infected that backyard flock because they're migrating around, moving around, and then that led to his chickens getting infected or whichever bird he had, and then leading to him getting infected and getting a serious case and passing away. And that is quite similar to what has happened with the dairy farms in that we've had these grackles or these little blackbirds basically flying between dairy farms and pooping and getting all the dairy cows infected was to the point where 20% of the milk supply in 2024 had uh, H5N1 viral material in it. And this was an individual who was over 65 and had a pre-existing condition, but 86% of people in the US who are over 65 have a pre-existing condition. So that's about 50 out of the 60 million people that are over the age of 65 in the US. And as we'll get to in a little bit, it's not only older people that are passing away from this. And then we also have the question of whether this was backyard meat or backyard eggs. We don't know for sure, but we do have one more piece of information, which I particularly don't like hearing. And that is from Johns Hopkins, quote, to make matters worse, samples taken from the individual suggest that the virus mutated within the patient after infection. Now, mutation is something we're gonna talk about more later, but I would just say that this is more of a concern now because it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that we have all of this bird flu that is leading to these spiking egg prices, which is then making it so, as Axio says, people flock to backyard chickens as egg prices spike. So more people are trying to get them to like save money on eggs and have more egg availability. And this is also fascinating because backyard flocks are of particular concern because looking to the USDA, we actually have more infected backyard flocks in terms of total number than we do have commercial flocks. However, a lot of those commercial flocks are massive. Like for example, the one that has been infected in the the last 30 days in Iowa, my home state has 400,000 birds, just one. And yeah, we've gotten to a point where about 150 million birds have either died or been culled slash killed due to H5N1 or the amount eaten at McDonald's in one day. I'm joking, we slaughter about 25 million chickens per day in the US. If you still want an eggy experience and protein, I think there's a much safer alternative than backyard eggs. And that is products like Just Egg. And I'm clearly not the only one that thinks that because Just Egg sales are 70% higher than they were at this point last year. And the cases from backyard chickens does not stop there at all. We'll get more into it. But first I wanna loop in this whole, 
RFK Jr. claim. He is, of course, the health secretary of the United States right now. And he recently was at a steak and shake because they just got beef tallow there, which a topic for another video. But in that interview, he claimed this. The disease is not passed through food. So you cannot get it. As, as far as we know, you cannot get it from an egg or, uh, or milk or meat from an infected animal. So he's saying, as far as we know, it can't spread through food, but why has the CDC made repeated warnings to stay away from raw animal products like milk and meat to lower the risk of infection? Maybe because we have a repeated documented cases of animals like cats getting H5N1 directly from consuming raw milk. First, it was a bunch that died from drinking raw milk on a farm. And there was somebody responding to one of my shorts on this topic saying, oh yeah, they were just being coughed on by the cows. No, we also have cases where domestic household cats have died from eating raw cow's milk. It's in there, they've traced it back, that's how they got it. Also have new data, a preprint study by Cornell researchers showing that active H5N1 virus remains stable in raw milk cheese for months, 60 days in particular is how far the study went. The CDC also apparently had to tell people to not drink raw milk to build up immunity against H5N1. But but who's crazy enough to promote raw milk? Since I've seen last year, I only drink raw milk. <laughs> No! On stage last year, he even said that he's only been consuming raw milk as of late. And this is once again a situation where we're sort of getting risk from both sides in that RFK Jr. also is a major proponent, even described as a leader of the raw milk movement. So well, on one end, he's saying that you can't get it from food. He's also telling people to go out and consume the exact food that experts warn they could potentially be infected from. So, but we're talking about cats here. Do we have any human cases from consuming food? And while we have some unknown random cases, which could have been food related, absolutely not proven there. We do have cases that really skirt the line, especially out of Cambodia here. Sadly, we had a three-year-old pass away, again, because their family had backyard chickens. From the health ministry, quote, the boy became ill after his family used sick chickens for cooking. And the Cambodian health ministry says that to prevent this, do not eat or handle infected birds. We also have a 28 year old Cambodian male who passed away, also had a backyard chicken flock, was eating them. And the health ministry of Phnom Penh says, quote, the latest Cambodian victim had raised poultry at his home and cooked sick chickens for food. And then this one here, I guess it just sort of pushes your definition of food, but from the WHO, quote, a few influenza A H5N1 cases have been linked to consumption of dishes made with raw contaminated poultry blood. And I will say this meat exposure does match up with how we've also seen cats get sick and trace that particularly to raw meat pet food. So there's that risk as well. Thankfully, uh, nobody is stupid enough to eat raw meat. So I'm a raw meat eater, meaning I only eat raw animal products. No, why, why, would, why does she do that? But I don't want you to just take my word for it. There is, for example, the uh, University of Florida Health Department saying, you're at an increased risk of H5N1 if you quote, eat raw or undercooked poultry meat, eggs, or unpasteurized raw milk or cheese from animals infected with H5N1. And the last thing I'll say about RFK Jr., I did do a short on this, mentioning his brain worm as well and how that is connected here. And people were thinking I was saying, oh, he's absolutely stupid. That's such as like a talking point. But no, I was saying his habits around consuming animals recklessly and just dealing with dead animals absolutely matches up. For example, he took a dead bear and transported it to Central Park in his car. He also decapitated a whale he found on the beach and put it on the hood of his minivan. And of course has been traveling around consuming all sorts of foods. And that is what his brain worm is, is a raw, pork tapeworm, which of course in lower hygiene conditions, whatever he was exposed to would make him way more likely to get that. Simply saying it all matches up because of his attitude toward food, which I am saying from here is not a good attitude to have, especially when raw milk consumption from the CDC itself is associated with 840 times the risk of infection compared to pasteurized milk, which of course could be further lowered by consuming plant-based milk. All right, now let's get some more general updates. First of all, we have that human-to-human -human transmission risk. Thankfully from now, it's mostly been animal-to-human transmission 
transmission. We've had extremely limited human to human transmission that hasn't spread, but it still has been documented. However, we are officially for the first time in the last couple of years seeing sustained sort of aggressive animal to animal, in particular mammal to mammal transmission of this virus. As this study mentioned, this virus has sustained mammal to mammal transmission in multiple settings, including European fur farms, South American marine animals, and US dairy cattle, raising questions about whether humans are next. This is so fun, like another pandemic is exactly what we need. Anyway, we have this chart here, which shows which animals it has spread through and how, but I will say, despite this being just a few months old, in the last few days, it has spread for the first time into sheep in the UK, which is again, it's adapting to another mammal. And then finally, we can see this map here where over time H5N1 has just sort of spread across animals across the world to the point where, you know, that's a lot of red dots. Like the world got some teenage acne. So the more animals, and in particular, the more mammals that this infects, the more opportunities it has to mutate to more easily infect humans. And of course, the more humans that it's in, we're at about a thousand now, the more likely it is to evolve as well. So has it evolved? So we already have some mutations that are helping it a bit. Thankfully, it's not enough to really push it over the edge. We have various PB2 mutations. It's complicated, but one in particular has helped it reproduce in human cells. To get more nerdy, a position within the virus that had glutamic acid, which was better at infecting birds, which have a higher temperature, shifted to lysine, which makes it better at infecting mammals at a slightly lower temperature which includes humans. Thankfully, there haven't been any dangerous receptor mutations where it can more easily bind to our airways, et cetera, in recent years. And so that is what I'm personally worried about because that's what happened with COVID. Technically SARS cov too. Okay, we all know what we're talking about. So at this point, as this chart mentions, the main risk here is getting it from either cows or chickens, really people who are dealing with these animals, which is why again, backyard chickens and other poultry is a high risk situation in my opinion. And then of course we have the historical context. Again, the 1918 flu coming from likely a small chicken farm, which is a great reminder that it does not have to be a factory farm in order to get these new diseases, which people seem to kind of have this notion that it is. And then uh, once again, it's worth mentioning that 75% of all of our diseases are zoonotic or animal in origin with the vast majority of those coming from farming animals, you know, raising animals to eat their products as well as them. And I'll end with a little bit of good news. First of all, we are seeing a bit of case drop off here, which is great. And then we also have the theoretical good news of as these viruses evolve, to spread more easily in humans, they tend to go down in their lethality. So once it jumps to humans more effectively, yeah, it might be quite lethal in the beginning, but if it evolves, it will likely get less lethal. Who knows what the actual fatality rate will be in the end, but hopefully not 50. And this is where I just have to state the obvious. If we collectively eat less animals and their products, we have less interaction with animals and we have less of these farm animals, especially factory farmed animals in super high numbers that create more and more opportunity for these mutations to occur. It's a no brainer. So to conclude, we still have this major concern with these raw animal products, whether we're talking about raw milk, raw cheese, basically harboring the virus for months at a time or raw meat or chicken blood, things like that. And really that these deaths are happening in people who raise backyard chickens, which you know seems like an innocuous thing to do, but you know, our first US death was that nobody knows that I feel like. I feel like less than 1% of the US knows that, probably like 0.01. .01. And also that I, I just clearly disagree with RFK Jr. who's again, the US health secretary telling people to drink raw milk, promoting it, saying it's all I've been drinking when <laughs> raw milk is probably the main concern here for people getting this virus from cows. And finally, yeah, we just gotta keep the total number of infections in animals and humans down as much as possible to prevent that mutation. If we can do that, uh, then we could potentially not worry about this virus. But with 75 billion uh, chickens raised and slaughtered per year, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to work hard. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let me know down below what you think about all this. Are there any news points about H5N1 that I missed? And of course, feel free to just express your concerns in the comments below. And then of course, you might've noticed there's no sponsor in this video. So you can always check me out at patreon.com and support me there, much appreciated. And feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.